Congressman, always good to see you. What are you Thank looking you. out for in these last six days in South Carolina and beyond? Voter suppression, voter suppression, voter suppression. Uh, that's net the game at this point. I think that um, Joe Biden has run a very good campaign. I think he has done his job uh, holding out the hope that we can restore uh, the goodness of this country and maintain its greatness. It's up to us now to do what is necessary to get beyond uh, the voter suppression attempts that are being made all over. And, and the Supreme Court seems to be complicit uh, in it as well. And the thing to do is get out there and vote. We're seeing that happen. At this point in the race, in, as far as early voter turnout, we're seeing significantly more than we saw back in 2016. How crucial is that? It is very crucial because I think we have to build up some big numbers because we just seen uh, the Supreme Court uh, allowing uh, a state to discount the ballots, uh, though they would be postmarked according to the law of the state. Uh, I think it's a shame if we know it's taking one to three, sometimes five days for the mail to arrive, but the law allows you to cast your vote up until five o'clock the day before. Now the Supreme Court is saying, if you want to throw those votes away, you can do it. That is why it is so critical for people to vote early in person, not trust the mail, because I don't believe uh, that uh, much of that mail from now uh, through election day will ever get counted. So we've got to vote in person uh, if we can. The New York Times is out with a new report that says the racial gap has actually shrunk by 16 points since the last election, with Biden gaining white voter support and President Trump making inroads with non-white voters. What do you make of that? Well, he may be making inroads, but I have said time and time again, I have watched this president perform uh, for the last almost four years now. I have watched the disdain that he expresses uh, for black women, and I cannot see any human being born of a black woman who will go out and vote for this guy. I don't understand it. I have three African-American daughters I don't understand how anybody can abide a man looking into a camera and calling a black woman a dog and then vote for him. I don't see how you can stand seeing the first African-American woman, first Asian-American woman on a major party ticket for vice president of these United States, calling her a monster, and then you go out and vote for him. Now, if that's true, all I can do is call upon my heritage and pray for you. There's nothing else I can do. There's another very important race in your home state. Jamie Harrison challenging Senator Lindsey Graham. Harrison has obviously raised a whole lot of money, but money only takes you so far. Do you think he has a chance at winning this race? Yes, he has a chance. It's an outside uh, uh, chance uh, because of the demographics of the state and because of the history of the state. But if we turn the vote out, uh, this is a voter turnout. Uh, if you turn the vote out, Jamie will win. And that's why I've been encouraging people uh, to vote early in person. That's the key to Jamie Harrison winning because South Carolina is also involved in voter suppression as well. Uh, and they've done so with the help of the United States Supreme Court so we have got to vote early in person. Jamie can win if we do that. I want to turn to the latest on a COVID relief bill. The Senate went home after the election with no deal. What is your message to the American people who cannot afford to wait? Your Democratic colleague, Congressman Mac Rose, said Speaker Pelosi made a mistake in not taking the White House's latest offer. I think that, you know, I'm like... Uh, <laughs> Uh, very much. He's just wrong about that. Uh, I've been talking with um, the Speaker every day on this issue. And what position she's taken is exactly the position I think she ought to take. Now, we can cure a lot of this with retroactivity if we were to pass something. But you know, I always say the devil lurks in the details. And I would hope people will stop looking at the top lines 
saying how close we are, and take a look and see who is getting the benefit of the legislation. So you got two uh, billion dollars, and if one point nine billion is going to the upper one percent, and you need a hundred thousand for the rest, that is not a good deal. The top line may look good, but look at the details. What are we doing for working men and women? What are we doing for state and local governments? What are we doing for food stamp recipients? Mealy amounts of money allocated for them while giving the Secretary of the Treasurer a big pot of money to do with as he pleases. I wish they would take a look at the bills and stop looking at the headlines. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.